All right. Everything's packed. Yes, yes, yes. Let's do this. I can't find my sunglasses, so I think I'm gonna have to rock my retros. Oh boy. Holy crap, you gotta be kidding me. I don't even think they're polarized. Jeez, all these beeping noises. It's a little early. There's tons of mullet right down there swimming around. Now normally I'd be all excited and grab my cast net and catch them, but I don't need mullet for today's game plan. Gotta put my GPS in there and then we can get on the way. Today's plan is to run south out to Tavernier Creek. I'll get some gas there and some chum and some bait. And then I'm going to run pretty much east to... I found a spot on Florida Fishing Spots that mark in grass bottom, which should be full of life. So the plan is to chum there, catch some ballyhoo, and then I will show you how I rigged the ballyhoo. And then we will take those rig ballyhoo and run out to the reef's edge and hopefully, once and for all, land ourselves a frickin' wahoo. fetish going on today. I want to rig them. I want to catch them. I want to catch them and then rig them. I want to troll them. I want to do everything I can to a ballyhoo. Coming for you, Wahoo. I see you. I'm coming. What is this? There's the Tavernier Creek Marina where I'm going to fill this thirsty lady up and then uh, head out under this bridge and boom that's the Atlantic Ocean and that's where we'll start chumming get some ballyhoo and then we'll run offshore and troll for the big boys I need to get me one of those look at that electric reel news well $386 at the marina. At least, uh, at least I was able to keep it under 400 this time. <laughs> All right, not too far from land, maybe about a mile, a mile and a half. Um, I came out here, and these are some real nice grass flats. There's a nice big patch of grass, and there's some rocks, and I think it's a good environment for ballyhoo and some big mutton snappers. So what we're gonna do here is, you can see I'm in uh, 13 feet of water, which I like. It is marking some fish on the bottom, so that's interesting. The main goal is just to catch ballyhoo, but I will be putting out a rod with a hopefully a nice ballyhoo chunk here in a second. And maybe we can get a big mutton while we're at it. I'm using this tournament. Master Chum, which has the uh, Menhaden milk in it or whatever, the uh, 
that oily fishy stuff which I'm hoping is gonna put some extra smell in the water to get the uh, to get the um, the ballyhoo smelling it from afar to get them right behind the boat get in there boy slack tide is around 11 30 p.m. today I think and right now it's about 9 20 so we got a good running tide which is important because when you're chumming you want the tide to push your chum away or else it's just gonna sink right to the bottom and you're not gonna attract many fish so I got probably an hour, maybe two hours of decent current left before it goes slack. So hopefully we can get on those belly hoots. Well, I know you're supposed to just use this fish oil for soaking your oats, but a little good luck, squirt, never hurt anybody. Just a little pour for my homies, that's all. Whoop. All right, that'll get them going. Whoop. I also got some thread herring here, which I'm defrosting. Those will be really good for chunk chumps. I'll be like, each thread herring I'll probably cut into three pieces or two pieces and just throw them out. That should get the fish excited. So basically I'll just cut them up like this. I'll put this nice big chunk on a hook, hopefully for a big mutton and the rest of this I'll, I'll start chumming this out there. Just give it a nice toss. Cut up some more pieces here. Yes, let the mutton get excited. So let me show you what I'm working with today. Um, here's my rod. I think it's a 30 pound test braid. I got about a one ounce sinker to a swivel with a nice long liter of 30 pound fluorocarbon. So here's the hook, nice chunk of um, thread herring. Hopefully I'll be using some fresh ballyhoo in a second because that's what I'm out here trying to catch. But thread herring for now and you can see this leader is I would say close to seven feet. I've been seeing everyone that's catching the big muttons. I always see them using huge leaders. So I'm going to give that a try today. Yeah, you can see that's the leader right there. So pretty long. It's a little hard to cast these long leaders, but never mind. No, it's not. <laughs> I just chucked that way out there. A plus, Heiko. You probably can't see, but the ballyhoo, there's already maybe five or six of them. They're starting to show up just like clockwork. They love those chum blocks. So, oh yeah, there's a whole bunch of ballyhoo showing up now. So let's get, um, let's catch some ballyhoo. Today we're gonna cover two ways that you can put some ballyhoo, live ballyhoo, in your boat. The perfect bait for trolling, the perfect cut bait for bottom fishing. One is a net, so obviously you need a net and you should probably know how to throw a net. That's one method that we'll do in a second. And the other method is hook and line. So you can take a fishing pole um, and use one of these very small golden hooks. You can tell they're not very big. You just tip the end of it with a little piece of chum or anything really and you just toss it right back out in your chum slick and the ballyhoo should grab it. So we can see the ballyhoo they have arrived. There's got to be at least 20 of them already behind the boat if not more. Wow 30, 40, 50, I don't know. Tons of them. So we'll start by using the small hook method. There it is, just a little piece of thread herring that I'm using. Oh, one of them tried, one of them went for it. They want it, so this is good, this is good. And just like that, we got a ballyhoo. <laughs> Woo!
Just like that. Oh, he's a juicy one too. Great. Just flick it out there. They should pretty much grab it um, real quick. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that didn't take long. Well, as you saw, it's pretty simple to catch those ballyhoo one by one with the little gold J-hook. But I don't like to catch ballyhoo one by one. I don't have all day. I want to throw a net on them. I mean, look how many ballyhoo are behind the boat. Just right in the chum slick. I say we put a net right on top of those guys. I want to toss out a nice chunk of fresh ballyhoo on the mutton snapper rod. So, I would say that piece looks just dandy. There, I'll hook it just like that. So now I can cast that guy out while I wait for more ballyhoo to show up for uh, to cast net. Well, I was about to uh, try to get a shot of me cast netting on mullet, but something grabbed a hold of my uh, of the ballyhoo. I don't have the GoPro on my chest, unfortunately, but uh, this should be fun. See what I got. Maybe a nice snapper. Oh, a mutton. It is a mutton. That's exactly what we've been looking for. Except, I mean, obviously he's not the size that I want, but the point is, Mission accomplished. <laughs> Let, let's see if we can get a big old one going. But first, let's catch some more ballyhoo. Oh yeah! <laughs> Another great net full of ballyhoo. Yeehaw! So a few ballyhoo with the hook, hook and line, and then one cast, and that's already what we have. So let's do a few more casts, and we should have plenty of ballyhoo for trolling for the next couple trips. There we go. Yep, so as you can see, I caught a nice amount of ballyhoo right there. It's about 11.20 and the slide's pretty much gone slack, just as expected. My chum is pretty much just sinking straight down instead of moving out away from the boat to attract the fish. But I'm seeing tons of fish, there's still tons of ballyhoo behind the boat. So what I'm gonna do is maybe fish for 20, 30 minutes. Just fully focus on fishing, have some fun, and then I'm gonna run out to the reef's edge where hopefully we'll have some real fun. This is the hook that I'm running. Got that 30 pound mono, maybe six, eight feet. And I took the weight off. And now I just have a straight braid to mono knot. So, there's no current, I don't really need the weight. I'm just gonna chuck it out there and let's see what happens. All right, I think I'm on something here, yeah! Something good, uh, feels good. I think it's also smart because, uh, oh, here it comes. Went for a rock. It's in a rock now. Damn it. Oh, I got it out. It could be a grouper the way that it's kind of bumping up and down from the rocks. Let's see. 
Let's see what we got ourselves here. Oh no, I think it's a, yeah, it's a mink. It's a uh, black grouper. Yes. Sweet, they gotta be 24 inches. We'll see what he is. Whoops. There he, ah, geez, come on. Uh, don't think he's big enough, but he is a beautiful fish. Sometimes that's all that matters. That's nice, right in the lip hook. It's perfect. Yeah, he's not big enough. 20, oh, about 21 inches. Beautiful, beautiful guy. Sweet, all right. I'm gonna let him go for him to enjoy another day. Oh, there he goes. Yep. Whoa, there's a lure just floating here. Let me see if I can grab that. Check that out. I just got myself a free fishing lure. He was just floating right, right next to the boat. Mm, he looks nice and shiny. I might be able to catch like some ladyfish or something on this guy. These chunks, that's what get the grouper and the big muttons to really come. You just kind of throw those back there and then that's the key. Oh, and we're on again. There's so much life here. I would, looks like we got a small snapper here. It's not at all what I was trying to go for. I mean, he's a legal snapper. Should I keep him? <laughs> you know what? I will keep him because I have been meaning to hole fry one of these guys. You know what? He's only 12 and a half inches. He's legal, but if I think I'll, I'm going to let him go. I've been catching so many snapper lately. I think something might have a hold of my, uh, piece of chunk bait yes it's playing with it I'm waiting for it to start swimming with it there we go yeah I'm on probably another little snapper if I had a guess oh oh no another grouper hello whoops Oh, these, these long leaders are hard to grab. That would be a, I believe, a red grouper. A small one. My, what a big mouth you have. Just a very small red grouper. Look, my bait is still in his mouth. I'll let him keep that. Yep, there he goes. So let's rig a couple bally here. They should look something like this in the end. The first thing we're gonna wanna do with our bally who is prep it. So I'm gonna be rigging two different styles. One will be with the double hooks on the top and the other will be double hooks on the bottom. Both methods, you need to start by clipping off these little fins so i find with a knife it works fine you just slide right under it oh that didn't go as smooth as planned there we go and then the other one sometimes you got to dig a little deeper and it'll work easier just like that do it to the other ballyhoo just pop it off other side Pop it off, there we go, finless. Now you wanna remove the eyes too. Some people keep the eyes on. If you have a thicker wire leader, it's easier to poke it through. But I'm gonna take the eyeballs out of both of them. The, um, the eyeballs will bulge out like that on both sides and it'll cause your ballyhoo to swim all crazy. So I prefer to just to pop the eyes out. Just like that. And there we go. 
two belly hole <laughs> belly holes yeah that's what it is belly holes now um both of them we're going to want to do about a half inch incision just right into the the anal hole right there and just cut up this will allow us to well in one of the rigs it'll be for a hook and the but for both rigs it'll allow us to squeeze all the contents out of there some people want to get the stomach and everything out too but for me i'm happy if just the majority of everything comes out keep it nice and pinched and just move your finger along there we go give it a little wash and beautiful now we have two beautiful prep ballyhoo so all this is is a three foot piece of leader which goes to two um, double hooks so then you have your piece of copper wire i'm actually reusing an old i've trolled this one before so it's actually an old rig um, i'll show you how to build one from scratch in a second here we want to line up this little poker is going to go through the top of this mouth so we want to line that up with the mouth just like that and wherever this hook goes through the fish is where we're going to make that hole so right here make the hole perfect so now you're gonna put the first hook through that hole bring it down 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 you don't want it to there you go and just shove it through shove it all the way in now add shove the other hook in too just like that perfect so now what we want to do is take your copper wire we're going to run it through the eye socket two times and twice and before i completely tighten that let me put my put this one up through the bottom jaw and then through the upper upper lip here just like that so it's poking out this is going to help keep the mouth close and something for the copper wire to really fasten to so now pull down tight on your copper wire you're going to make one circle behind the the wire poking out of his upper lip and then the rest will be in front And you want to make sure that your leader is kind of being nicely fastened onto the beak of the ballyhoo. And if there's some left over, like an inch, you can just pop it off. Just like that. And there you have it. That is a double hooked rig ballyhoo. You control this naked. Or in my case, I'm gonna be putting an Islander on it. I'm actually gonna put him in here. I wanna keep him out of the sunlight or else they get all hard and then they're just not, they're just not as good as what they can be. You'll notice that both these hooks are, the tips are on the top. The other, the other way is one is like this and the other hook is up top. So it's a little different style how these hooks are set. Take your wire. Run it here and then twist it on. Also take my copper and twist that on too.
that's basically all there is to it. You got your hooks, you got your main wire leader coming off of that, and you got your little piece of copper wire that you use for fastening your ballyhoo. So these hooks are gonna set, instead of sitting like this with one poking out the bottom like that, they're gonna both be on the top and they're gonna sit like this. We'll give the top just a little, little bit of a, uh, get rid of the scales. Just like that. Make an incision along the back, right to the rib, I mean the spine, and just cut back along the spine, just like that. Perfect. So now, we're just gonna shove our hooks in there. You wanna line this poker up with the top of the ballyhoo's lip. So you know, okay, this should go in there like that. So this should go, just jam it in there. And then the back, you'll just bring it far back. Just kind of jam it deep in there as deep, as good as you can get it. Move back up, take the leader tag end and stick it through the top, top of the ballyhoo's nose. Who doesn't want to poke through? Okay. It's a tough ballyhoo right here. There we go, it went through. Now like the other one, we'll do two loops through the eye socket. Sorry this is shaky. I, I think I'm gonna have to redo. I'm gonna make a professional video inside in the air conditioning. No wind, no waves, but this is just a little brief overview here for you guys. So you know what I'm trolling today. All right, and then we will bring this down once. Just like the other one, we are just tying this leader along the beak. Break off the rest of the beak, toss that and there you go. And this one will be trolling a black and red Islander. So I have big hopes for this guy right here. Wahoo candy. I've rigged four ballyhoo in there. The rest I'm gonna put in a bag and put it inside the cooler so they stay nice and fresh and cold and um, usable. I'll keep those right in there. Ooh, I think I got something here. Uh, don't know what it is. Oh, I went into a rock. Sometimes when they go into the rock like this, all you can do is give it slack and hope that uh, it relaxes a bit and then decides it's safe to come out. Other than that, you might pop yourself off trying to pull them out. All right, I waited a little bit. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. <clears throat> oh, God, ow. Nope, he's in that rock. He ain't coming out. Broke off my hook, fortunately, but I'm using a much bigger hook this time. Oh yeah, I got something here. Don't let it, oh, it popped off. Oh, I gotta get it off the ground, whatever it is. No, 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 it's trying to go for the rocks. I won't let you, I won't let you. Oh, 
What do we got here? Looks like another black grouper. Oh, a red grouper. Hello. Hey, oh. Hey, he might actually be legal. That red grouper got to be 20 inches. Let's check. He's like 19 and a half. <laughs> Lucky fella. There we go, another big boy. Man, I know there's big grouper down there. I've, I've been catching them, but I really want to go trolling. I should stay here, but I want to troll, so I'll send him back. There he goes. I think the key to getting these grouper and muttons around the boat is just to create a nice falling pattern of decent chunks and uh, kind of throw yours in there with it. Gets the big boys all riled up. Another grouper. Small one. Another small red grouper. There must be tons of them down there. There we go. <laughs> He's really small, but still a beautiful, beautiful grouper. Go get big. I'll be back for you, man. Go on. There he goes. Ah, I got something else here. Is that a snapper? <laughs> yeah, it looks like a snapper. Whoop. Yeah. I think I want to keep him. He's a good looking size. Oh. <sighs> Slippery. Oh yeah. I'm gonna, if I had to take a wild guess, I'm gonna say 13 and a half inches. Let's see. Whoa. Okay, I'll come to you then. He's like 13.6 inches. Boom! I'm bringing you home, buddy. One fish in the box. I'm not going home empty-handed today, but also the real goal of today is not to come home with a, with a snapper, but to come home with a wahoo. Oh, on something here. Hey, another grouper. What do you know? All right, big boy. Let me see here what we got going on. Okay, okay. See, so like fish, huh? Here we go. Another small grouper. There's. It's funny. Yes. <laughs> Doesn't feel like a monster, but uh, oh, it feels good reeling something in. Oh, what we got here? Another mutton snapper, a small one. Oh, he just, he just crapped himself. <laughs> I think some of it got in my mouth. <laughs> All right. All right there, fish. Come on. Come on. Jeez. All right. Whoa! <laughs> there he goes. I'm catching a mutton or a grouper every like five, ten minutes. <laughs> but um, that's not what we're here for today. So despite me marking tons of fish under the boat despite me getting all these hits despite me seeing tons of bait fish and other stuff we're gonna move offshore and hopefully get ourselves a big big something put some meat on the boat whoa nelly it's a little wavy Oof. All right. Woo! All right. Um, 
you can see right here on the reset you went from 40 50 feet all the way to 100 feet and it'll keep probably dropping off to about 120 feet just right here off the uh Resedge right out of Tavernier Creek. So this is how ah, there's a frigate bird up there. I would say that this is a great place to start trolling. So here I am with a nice option of lures to use. I want to give a huge shout out to uh, my subscriber Richard Stone. Dick Stone. Big thanks. You sent me a huge box of lures for Christmas. So much appreciated. I'm going to be trolling all the lures you sent me in the spread today, so big thanks. This black and purple islander is what I am going to put... Wait, where's my belly hoo? Where's my... What do I do with my belly hoo? Oh, there he is. Jeez. Alright, so the first thing I'll do is Put this islander over the wire, just like that. See the ballyhoo is nice and hidden in there. I'm gonna twist the top of the wire, make a loop here. Just like that. Woo wee! There we go, there's the loop with some twists. So there we go, um, I will be trolling that on the deep drop rod in a second. All right, I got a trolling weight, and then normally I would put some mono here, a nice mono, I guess, shock cord, but um, not this time. And there's my big old ballyhoo. There's all these little seaweed patches out here. Hopefully I don't have too many problems with them. There it goes. Looks like it's gonna cause lots of commotion. I like that. I'd say about 100 yards out there, 125 yards. And I will stick him up here. There we go. Cruising up top. For him, I'll just be using a very simple double hook ballyhoo with a uh, ultraviolet purple squid skirt. And hopefully that'll produce. I got about two and a half feet of metal leader on there. Wire. And there we go. Let him go out and explore the world. Okay, I got my three rods out. If I had a buddy with me, I would like to troll four or five rods, but three rods is already enough just just by myself, it's a headache. I see some flying fish in front of the boat and they sometimes scatter out here. There's scattered weed. I'm actually marking fish right under the boat right here. So we're trolling about four, four to five knots. So much slower than what I normally troll. And I gotta say, this is much more relaxing. I really enjoy this. Um, easier to keep the boat in a straight line. No fishing trips complete without a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Mmm, yeah. It's been 15, 20 minutes. Haven't got a hit yet, so I'm gonna quickly check on the baits, make sure they're swimming right. Well, I can see a problem already. All right, I'm gonna take the trolling weight off. Screw that. Way too much bulk, unnecessary, I don't need that. Who wants a tr 
a trolling weight, not me. Yeah, get rid of that big bulky thing. The bait looks amazing. No weight, just, just trolling. Let's see how that swims. I gotta say, it swims pretty fabulous. All right, that has got to catch something. <laughs> I think that's by far the best bait, best looking bait I've ever trolled. This guy had some seaweed on him too. It, most of it fell off right at the boat. But that just goes to show the importance of uh, checking your lines every maybe every 15 20 minutes definitely doesn't hurt it's been another half an hour maybe even more and i just feel like i'll waste all day if i'm just trolling in the same spot so i'm gonna reel everything in run it and gun it to somewhere that just looks more fishy than this i'm gonna check out the wrecks And if I don't see anything at the wrecks, I'll run out a little further offshore into like 250, 250 feet of water and see if I can get on something there. All right, 118 feet. Marking tons of fish, finally. I rode out to a different spot, different ledge, and a little further north. And um, I think this looks like a good time to start trolling. I wonder what's down there. I, I threw some chunk ballyhoo, or some chunk thread herring out, but uh, nothing's coming up to the boat, so let's start trolling. We're back in the trolling game. Got all my rods out, except this one. Now I got all my rods out. Bree out here. I'm gonna see if there's a fish on it. See if it'll wanna eat a chunk of thread herring. Nope. Desperate. And I ran out about 10 miles. We are in 320 feet of water now. But it's all okay because I'm feeling really good about this decision. Back at it again. Same spread, different place. There's that daisy chain making a ruckus back there. He's pulling. Yes. Come to daddy. Come to daddy. Oh. Hey. Wonder what it is. This is on the daisy chain. What could it be? If it hit on the daisy chain, it's probably a tuna. If I had to take a wild guess. It's got some fight in it. Yeah, it's got some fight in it. Yes. Woo, oh. yeah. Whatever you do, don't come off because I, I want to at least know what you are. 
It saw the boat and didn't get very happy about that. What is it? I think it's a tuna. It's gotta be a tuna. Beautiful colors on this guy. Stoked. All right, turning the aerator on. Ooh, that wave just smashed in here. I'm gonna bleed him out in here. Just cut the gills so he bleeds out real quick in there. And then we'll move him to the ice box. I dropped a man overboard where I, where that tuna hit. So we're gonna go back and troll around that area again. Maybe we'll pick off another tuna or something else. It was in about 220, 230 feet of water. So I'll do one big pass back around this area and then we'll head, head in closer and I'll try to troll in, in more like 60 to 130 feet. And see if I can catch maybe a, I don't know, a little sunset special on the uh, reef sedge here at Key Largo. who sink for like a minute I'm gonna kind of bring them back up and I'm gonna put it in gear yeah. it's getting really windy I've been I did a few circles over where I was marking all those fish and I'm just not getting anything so Sun's starting to go down as always. Ooh, I just got soaked on that drive and I'm kind of drenched, but I'm not giving up yet. One more thing to do. It's time to troll. Um wait, let me get let me get it out of the bag. Come on. A plug on the reef. Wait. So we had that one medium sized dive plug and then we have this guy right here who's a little bit smaller, but should be good. Let's make sure he swims right. And I think I'm throwing in the white flag. I don't want to be driving back in the pitch dark. Dang. I thought there was a chance I could maybe pick up a grouper, but... It'll come. Freezing cold. Man, I, I'm freezing. Sucks. 
home sweet home. Well, 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 look who showed up. It's swimming pretty fast. Hard to keep up with ya. <laughs> wow, that's a big nosy. <laughs> we got it in there. Oh, it's trying to drink the drops from the dripping out of there. That's funny. Manatee life right there. Savor every drop. About to put the hose away and I look down and look how desperate this manatee is. <laughs> it's just trying to collect every drop off of the dog. <laughs> like it'll do anything for a drop of water. This leak in the water pipe sure is convenient for this manatee. There's also a natural uh, spring in this marina, and that's why all the manatees come here. Drink the fresh water coming out of the spring. Dang, look at that. And she's getting all the lemon. You're welcome. Using its paws to funnel the water into its mouth. Boat's clean. Well, I got hatchery fishing down. I feel pretty confident. Anytime I run out, I'll catch fish on the hatchery. But trolling the Wahoo. Where are you, Wahoo? I'm wet and I'm cold. So I'm gonna go home and make a hot chocolate. Mmm.
Well, what I should have done is scaled it before taking the head off, but this will work just fine. Just take a knife or anything, just like that. Just move the knife against against the scales and they'll come right off. Just like that, got most of them off. Do the same thing to the other side. There we go. No more skills except the ones kind of stuck to it. So we'll just wash those off. There we go. Nicely washed. Got it. Wash and everything. Ready for the fryer. The snapper is ready. I'm going to probably bread it in some kind of batter and just throw it in hot oil fry it up. That's all I'm going to do with the snapper. And the tuna, I just have to flay it real quick. That shouldn't take long. And I am going to sear it with a coconut and breadcrumb crust. And then I'll just be dipping that into some wasabi and soy sauce. And that's the plan.
Looks tasty, huh? Me too. I got a tuna fetish. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you're not bad at cooking either, dude. Well, that's really good. What do you put on top of it? Coconut, coconut crust with panko breading. That really fucking classes it up, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you always need to add that touch of classiness. Woo!